Hey, what's up guys? So I'm pretty sure if you've been using the latest version of Capture One, which is version 24, if you've been using it, then you must be very, very excited about what we've all been waiting for, which is subject selection and the inverse of it, background selection. Now this is all done with AI. And finally, we see it in Capture One after it's been in Lightroom for a while and in Photoshop for quite a while. So um, this immediately led me to play with it and come up with ideas on how I can streamline my workflow in cool ways. And over time, I developed a quite a few actually styles based on the subject and background selection that I started using regularly. And then I thought about other things that could be also useful. And I've created a brand new set of styles. Okay. And they're called the NBP portrait tools. Okay. There's also NBP portrait monochrome tools, which we'll talk about in a minute. But I kind of want to give you an overview. We're going to kind of be everywhere just to kind of show you how it works. We're going to start in the studio. Then we're going to move on to another, uh, probably another set of images that's going to be more location. And we're going to play around with these to give you an idea of what they do. And I may not go over all of them. They're pretty self-explanatory. But the first thing I want to make sure everyone knows is that when you set up, or rather when you assign, let's go to a shot here. Let's go to this one. Okay. When you assign uh, one of these styles. It'll try to give you some semblance of a preview as styles tend to do. Okay. It'll kind of show you what's basically happening, but it also won't. You might see some core functions that ha are happening to the background layer, now known as the image layer in the, in the layers palette. But you won't see what happens until you click is what I'm trying to say. So let's say on this one, for example, let's go to a really obvious one. We're going to go to here, background solid white. Okay. So if you click background solid white, it's going to do its little AI analysis. And then it'll determine what the background is. And the way I've set it up is you'll get pure white. Now you might think, hold up on this one, you might not see that it's completely useful, but that layer is of course, something you can change the opacity on. So you can scale it back until you find something that works. You want that white to be nearly pure white. This is a way to do it. You want it hundred percent pure white. You have that option as well. And of course you can tweak the mask as needed if any places are, are missed or whatever. But as you can see, Capture One's masking is actually really, really good. I have tested hundreds of images since it came out and it's really, really good. So you can just kind of, you know, that's one option there for choosing a pure white background. It's a good idea to get your shots like in a decent place. Like I might choose the, you know, white balance to kind of balance the background a little bit. I might change the, you know, exposure just a bit to make the shot look a little better to my eye before I start doing these portrait tools, right? Those are just basic things. If you have a shot that's two, three stops underexposed, you're, you're not going to have the best results. Okay. So that's, you know, one option here. Now let's look at some of the subjects. Let's play with them. How about, um, deep in skin one and two? We're going to go ahead and do deep in skin two because on video things don't show up as strong. Two is just a little bit stronger than number one. So we're going to let that do its AI process. And as you can see, it deepens the skin. And the way I set it up is that it's approximately 65% opacity and usually a little too strong. Pretty common for my MVP styles and actions to start too strong and then you can scale it back. And if you really want, you can scale it up, but you can scale it back to get the exact look that you want. But as you can see, it starts with the subject selection, then it focuses on the skin and you have a beautiful way to deepen the skin and you can keep modifying from there. It's not just one thing. You can come in here to all your adjustment settings and change what you need to change, okay? So let's go ahead and get rid of that one. Let's try another one. How about um, subject highlight boost? Let's do that one. I have noticed that when I'm playing with it, that once it does an AI analysis of a subject mask, sometimes it's almost like it does it really fast the second time you try it, almost as if it's remembered. I don't know if it keeps some kind of metadata or something. But anyway, there it is. It's brightened. And if you think, you know, oh, well, it's a little too much, there's a couple things you can do. Apart from opacity, don't forget, you also have Luma range right here. So it's a great way to, you know, kind of target where you want those highlights to land on her skin, something like that. So now it's masked on her and only on her skin and only on the brightest highlights just to make a nice little pot. Very, very important when you have something that has a, a, you know, a very busy background. But at the same time here, if I pop the highlights, you know, without masking out the subject, then of course the white background is going to get really bright as well because it's usually a highlight, of course. So that's another tool. You can see how kind of we're going with all of this, right? So we have subject refresh, which is kind of cool. Um, let's check that out. This is just my way of like giving a, a subject a little bit of a pop if it's sort of lacking in contrast or lacking in some kind of texture, lacking in presence. This is just a cool way to give it some life, okay? Starts off 75% opacity. You can see it's very, very subtle off and on, and you can turn that a little stronger. Just kind of wakes up a subject, I think. It's a good... You know, 
I played it. This is stuff that I do all the time. So I kind of put it into a style and thought, oh, okay, with the subject mass, this can be very useful, right? So you can tweak any of that as well. The other ones are a little bit stronger in terms of how much they, they modify. We have a subject shadow boost. So I'm going to go try that one real quick. As you can see, these are relatively quick in terms of how fast it's determining the mask. But I am going to show you what it's like when you add it to many images, because then it's not so fast. So here's a shadow boost of just a subject, which is really cool. You can turn that up stronger. See that? Just a subject. Very, very cool when you want to just make the subject pop in a different sort of way. Now, regarding, like I said, multiple images, let's say we have these three. Okay. Now, we'll put this down here. Now, if I come in here and say, oh, let's, um, let's do subject compression high, which is going to kind of help balance the subject out in terms of highlights and shadows, right? So let's go ahead and run that. But as you can see, with three images selected, when I run it, it says applying styles one of three. It's going to do the first one. And as you can see, you know, this is real time. I'm not going to speed it up. I might speed it up if we do like 20 of them, but this is going to be real time. So it's going to try to do the first one. And in a second, it'll finish that. <laughs> it's also a recording video, so it's always a little bit slower. So the first one's done. You may have noticed that the subject, she got compression on her highlights came down, shadows came up. Now it's working on the second one. And of course, like I said, recording video, it's a little bit slower and I do not have some brand new Mac Pro specced out machine. I have a decent MacBook Pro and it's nice, um, but it's not the fastest thing ever. So as you can see, with three shots, it, it took a minute. OK, but, you know, we have compression on each. Oops, didn't mean to hit the white balance. So we have compression on each. See that works really, really well. And it's a custom mask, obviously, for each one, but because it has to build a custom AI mask for every shot when you have them selected, it can take a while. So let's do an example of that. I'm going to go ahead and choose all of these images with the white background and the jeans. OK, and then I'm going to choose background solid white. OK, so I am going to fast forward this in the final edit. But uh, when I fit when it finishes, I'm going to tell you how long it actually took. So you kind of get a benchmark of what to expect in workflow. So right out of the bat, Right off the bat, I do not recommend that you say, hey, I'm going to take these 176 shots from one set and I'm going to apply an AI mask to all of them. That's, I mean, unless you have nothing else to do, set, set that and go. But it's a good idea to do that after you have your finals selected. But let's do a demo here. So it's at 3.22 p.m. I'm going to go ahead and run a timer here and so long, see how long this takes. Here we go. OK, now that took a very real one minute and 52 seconds. And for 10, 10 images, that's not bad. But you can imagine how if it was 100 images, then two minutes now becomes 20. And so, you know, you have to consider that when it comes to these AI math. Now, those Lightroom folks already know this. But, you know, for us in Capture One, we now have this for the first time. So that was nearly two minutes for 10, uh, you know, background math, which is basically the same tech. It's just got to solve where the subject is and then invert it, etc. So that worked out pretty good there. Now I'll show you a couple other samples. Let's say I come to this one. Okay. So if I were to go to the background solid black, let's go ahead and run that one. Like I said, you may not want these solid backgrounds. Of course, you also might, but it's a good idea to be able to get that. Sometimes I wished I could do it in RAW. That I wish I could deepen something in raw because I don't want to get banding or I don't want to get some other kind of noise. So there it is, pure black, great mask. Capture One's killing it on the mask on that, to be honest. If there's any issues there, you can fix them. That's fine. You can brush that in. Those little wispy hairs won't matter, etc. Okay. But don't forget, like I said, it doesn't have to be 100%. You can take the opacity down. Here's none. Okay. But let's take it up and just darken that background. So it looks more like a pure black background. This is useful when you want to use black seamless paper, but it's not quite black or has some other variances in it. We're going to show you also what colorize will help you when you have seamless paper and these uh, styles. You'll see what I'm talking about. So, OK, so let's uh, take a look at some other shots here. Let's go back to let's try this one for a moment. OK, so let's go to subject highlight recover. Let's run that one. Now, this is going to do a very strong highlight recovery on your subject and then you can tweak from there. But the fact that it's only your subject is important to me. So I'm going to turn that up 100% so you can see. It's a very subtle effect, but it just brings down, you know, skin shine a little, but mostly those perimeters and other bright, bright highlights that seem to be a little out of control. It's going to be more pronounced on shots that have more of a highlight issue than this one does. So if I ran that 
And then let's say I came over here and went to background solid black. We'll let that run real quick. What's interesting is that I have noticed that Capture One does not seem to uh, recognize that it has a subject mask and an inverted or whatever. Okay, so some masking issues here, but I can take that down a little bit again. On, if I can bring that background up. If for some reason I want to do that, look at that, no banding on that circle of light, which you would see that Photoshop almost certainly even on 16-bit. But I can just obliterate it, and now I have, you know, highlights controlled on her and a solid black background if I wanted it. Again, I can tweak it to whatever I need. So to me, th those are very quick things that I always wish I could do in, you know, in Capture One, in RAW. Okay, so let's have here. How about um, background desaturate? That one's pretty straightforward, but we'll go there. We'll let it run. In this case, I wanted color on the background. So, um, you know, I wanted some flares, but there it is. Neutral in the background. Keep in mind, too, guys, on Capture One, if your mask is wrong, like this one is, you click your little AI mask, hold down Alt or Option, and I can say, hey, let's, let's not include the jeans there please and then they come back to normal and you can also tweak all the details like this uh, guitar cable to be honest i can click that i can click that there we go and now we've desaturated the background see very very simple we also have background saturate which of course does the opposite very useful these are simple tools that you don't realize you need until you do right i know it sounds silly but you don't always realize it let's say we have this um this pink light in the background, they're not super strong, but let's try this for real quick. I'm going to go to background colorize pink. All right, I'm going to show you what that does. It is extreme at first, again, as many of my styles and actions are, but when done, you can change the opacity. And now we have a little bit, we can go for neon pink if you want, but let's fix that mask real quick just for the sake of a more appropriate result. There we go. I kind of like that. And then we can make it like, I don't know, maybe we can make it like 32%, whatever. And it has a pink background. I don't know. And you might think this is simple stuff we can do in Photoshop. I know. I know. Believe me, I know. But what I mean to say is that sometimes you do this in RAW, especially on studio type of backgrounds. This is why I'm starting here. Studio backgrounds with banding, studio background with, with glowing lights like this that are radiating outward and radio gradations. These things will band, these things will get messy quick when you do heavy changes in Photoshop. Even in 16-bit, you're not always guaranteed. So this is why, to me, having this masking, like I, when I tested it in Lightroom last year, Having this masking in Capture One has always been a huge, huge benefit. Now, let's shift gears a little bit because I'm going to uh, go to another set real quick. And I want to show you what the Colorize can do for you on a seamless paper that's colored. So let's switch gears. So here's a shot done on red seamless. And it looks fine. Don't get me wrong. But what if we took that up a level and added some boost to it? Let's see. Background, Colorize, Red. Let's have a go with that, right? And, you know, this background is in very good shape, so there's not a whole lot of problems. There wasn't any type of weird discoloration or anything like that. Major cuts or creases or things that you're going to have to fix that with healing. But something like this, that's why I have also the main the main uh, color hues, if you will. I'll explain that in a second. But here it is entirely too strong, but you can see the pop that it adds because it colorizes everything. Any type of weird color artifacting is covered up by this colorization. So I can take that down to like a 58% and look at that. I have made that beautifully rad and it works out really really well and keep in mind like i said if i were to come here to these four shots and then say background colorize red it's going to do those four we'll let you see this one in, in real time it probably should take something on the order of about 10 seconds per shot is what kind of i'm estimating and during that i'll remind you a couple of things uh, the first one is that this is an, an evolving technology, so it'll change regularly and we will try to keep up with it. I, I don't usually like making tools that are like on the bleeding edge of a new update of new tech. Um, it's very concerning to me to do that, which is one of the reasons why I was hesitant on this. But I, I think it's pretty set. I think it's pretty standard. And I think one of the reasons it took so long is because Capture One did a phenomenal job. And that's what I want to get to. I don't see this changing. I don't see it causing a problem because my testing is really good, like really good. And not just as automatic, but the way you can modify the AI selections is uh, to me superior to Lightroom already. So really, really liking it. And I don't see it needing to change or anything like that. So look at that. See how fast that was? We immediately made a bright red. If we look at the originals, as you can see, apart from exposure changes and whatnot, it's a little bit pink on the bottom, very dark red in the back. 
and now we've colorized it with this beautiful colorizer. And you might be thinking, let me undo that real quick. You might be thinking, well, what about these other ones like this pink one? Well, why don't we try that? Let's try pink. So I'm just going to reprocess all of my polish is just done one, but here we are. <laughs> so again, um, what Capture One has done to me has been uh, phenomenal. As you can see, look at that. It's pink already. No problem at all. You can technically do this with like just a color selection and shifting, but it's a little more difficult when there's other elements that are bleeding over. So if she had for some reason a red outfit on red jewelry or something red, it would have been an issue to do this mask. OK, automatically based on hue ranges. So the fact that we have an AI range, we can make it all pink if we wanted to. <laughs> there you go. OK, so it works out pretty, pretty well in that regard. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now, let's talk about some of the um, portrait monochrome tools because they they utilize the background and subject selection as well. But we're not going to use this set. So let me let me grab another set. One second. All right. So here's a shot from a set that I intentionally did to make it all black and white. OK, so this is right out of camera and the exposure is very safe. It's not very bright, etc. So with a couple of careful tweaks just to make sure that my exposure is right and that my um, black and white conversion is what I expect. I'm going to go ahead and just set the white balance real quick. It's real easy because I got a great background. No problem there. And I'm going to brighten it just a little bit because I feel like it's a little bit under. OK, so something about like that. That works pretty well. Now, let's go take a look at some of our portrait monochrome tools. So we have a background contrast boost, contrast reduction on the background, background darken, etc. Deepen blues is great when you have like beaches and pools and things like that because you can deepen those things, but also the sky can get deepened. There's none here, so we will skip that. But let's go ahead and do um, SNB contrast boost, which is of course subject and background. So it's going to process those and then give us control of both of them to get a different sort of black and white result. Or at least something that can be controlled in a unique way as opposed to desaturation. I usually do this with my MVP actions, my monochrome actions. They do a lot of subject selecting and background selecting. But now we have it here in raw. We really want it. OK, so here's what we've done. We do have a compressor. You're familiar with MVP. You know, that kind of flattens things nice. OK, but we have background contrast boost, which you can increase. We can remove it. We can make it strong again. The subject contrast, we can reduce the contrast on her. We can increase the contrast on her. What a different look. And of course, all the other settings are available to us. But one of the benefits of one of the benefits of styles is that you can quickly run through things and see which ones you like. But keep in mind, like I said at the beginning of this video, these won't work quite as accurate until you hit the button. So for example, S and B pop medium, you're getting a basic preview of the backing layer of what's happening on the backing layer, but you don't see what's happening on the subject in the background until you hit go because it has to process the mask. OK, how Capture One will handle this in the future, I don't know. Maybe if you process a subject mask, it'll keep it until you delete it or change it in some kind of uh, metadata. Like I said, I don't know. OK, so missed the hair right here. As you can see, if you look at the subject mask, there's a well, actually, you know what? If we go to the background mask, we'll see a little better. We missed the hair right here. Simple fix, no problem at all. But as you can see, it makes her pop a little bit. OK, and it makes the background more muted, a different type of black and white conversion. Very, very different than the original. It gives it a whole different feel, right? So I think that's super cool. OK, uh, let's see what else we have. We have S&B smoothed out more, which I think I want to show you guys that one real quick. Just again, another black and white look that could be cool. And you can technically, once you decide you like it, you can apply it to all your shot selections. Uh, again, I, I don't recommend applying it to 185 shots, but nonetheless, here we are. I'm going to put this on maximum so you can see. You can see it's a very flat, sort of compressed look. Looks a little bit vintage, maybe. Very, very, very cool look that I actually leverage quite a bit. OK, refresh that. Now let's take a look at some of the more adventurous ones. How about, let's see. Highlight boost high. Subject highlight boost high. Let's see what that does. As if I don't know. <laughs> Just curious what it's going to do on this shot. OK, so as you can see there really pops her quite a bit here again you can modify the mask it's going to keep missing the hair right there but that's an easy paint job it's very very simple but as you can see it goes from black and white conversion to pow you know and you can turn that down a little bit if it's a little bit too strong makes quite a bit of difference on how your black and white conversions look they're not just a common desat and you can do so much more of them uh crushed background that one's not going to work here as much we'll show you some other samples in a minute 
Okay, but we have, um, what else we have? Subject extra con, subject highlight boost low, medium, and high. We just showed you high. I think that's pretty cool for now. Let's show one of the reverse ones here, reverse pop. This is a little different. Rather than make the subject strong, it makes the subject muted and the background strong. It's going to be a little different on simple white background like this, but I'm very curious to see what kind of result we get. Yep, there we go. So we can tweak that, of course, because she's a little bit on the dark side. We can tone that down a little bit, the brightness in the background, see? So she's a little more muted, and we can just dial that in exactly like we want. And don't forget, you can also change the background. Everything above changes as well very very straightforward so let me find another set i'm going to show you a couple other functions all right so let's take a look at what this one does on an image that's outdoors let's see what these you know sort of monochrome ones do so let's go to background darken i'm going to run that real quick as you can see it is giving you a little bit of a preview which again i'm going to go ahead and turn off the simple grade which again is not necessarily accurate until you hit the button so let's go to background darken and see what it does here again, it's reprocessing, but that's the benefit here is that on a, on a studio shot with a clean background, often we can get away with a hue range selection and we can do a lot of things if we're lucky, like we don't have colors crossing over and whatnot. But with AI, now we can do this exactly like we always wanted. So as you can see, the background is darkened and we can make it even darker. Look at that completely different feel than as if we didn't do it. See that? Very, very different feel. And it doesn't look forced. It's just a very nice, natural, black and white sort of feel. Okay, um, let's go ahead and go to crushed background darken. Now, what does crushed mean? So the way I mean it is that it's heavily compressed. And sometimes that heavy, heavy compression can be useful. So here it is. Um, as you can see, the subject has been enhanced a little bit. Usually that's good just to counteract the compression crushing, as I told you. Okay, so if I turn that up a lot, you'll see that the background lost its dynamics. The whites have come down, the blacks have come up. And sometimes that can be a cool look and sometimes it can help be, it can be corrective. It can help you in that situation where something is a lot of control and you want the background to be cleaner. It can also just be a creative decision as well. So there's that and keep in mind, as you go on these, you can always come out here to the adjust tools on any one of these and change things. Right now it goes down about half a stop. So you can just make it go down a whole stop if you want to. And now the whole thing gets darker, see that? And it's still heavily, heavily compressed. Just a very, very different look as opposed to that, to that. And you can keep playing and tweaking and adjusting and finding things that work for you. So let's just erase those two. And let's see, if we can try another one. How about, well, we don't have any blues on here, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and just reset that completely. Oh yeah, I did like a, I forgot I did a, what do you call it? A, you know, a skew adjust on that. Okay, how about subject? Well, let's try one of these pops again. Let's do it real high. Subject pop high. Let's see what happens here. I love black and white conversion. There's so many different things you can do. And when you have the subject selected, you can do so much more. So obviously that's too much. It's extreme, right? So we can just come here and turn her down a bit. And we can turn this down a bit until we find a balance that we like. But still, we're bringing her out in a different sort of way. These to me are like the most exciting tools of them all because I love monochrome conversions, like I said, but there's a bunch of other things on here. Like I said, I want you to play with them. Um, they're really, really useful to me. For example, the skin balancer, maybe we'll try it on this shot, the skin balancer. We're going to refresh that and tone that down. Tone that down. There we go. The skin balancer is like the, um, the capture one's famous skin tool, which helps with uniformity of skin tone and other things as well. Hue shifting and all that. Here we can do it automatic. I'm going to go ahead and do subject skin balancer high. It's going to select her and it's going to find a uniformity to her skin tone relatively high, like a, a, a higher setting probably than you normally use. But that's kind of the whole point because now we don't have to worry about the rest of the image getting involved when we do this or making a manual mask. And as you can see, it has worked. Okay. It's definitely worked. And of course her hair is involved because her hair tone is very similar. But as you can see, it's really made her hair and skin and lips almost all the same. You can adjust those settings manually here, like I said. Okay, come down here to these settings right here, skin tone. And if it's just too strong in general, you simply take the opacity down. And now we have some skin tone balancing, hue balancing in this case mostly, but a little bit of lightness balancing. So that is just a quick rundown of the styles that we've created based on subject and background selection in Capture One. Using him on raw data is so important to me. It's so exciting to me because there are times where I wish I had it. Not so much in my outdoor shots, shots with lots of texture like this, shots with lots of backgrounds and lots of things going on. 
and they're very dynamic. That's a little more satisfying in Photoshop. But those studio shots where, again, banding will kind of kick your butt uh, or other issues like that and other weird artifacting and things like that will kick your butt. I really, really like having control of the subject separate from the background. And like I said, apart from corrective, it's also a really great way to explore creative options. So check that out. The uh, MVP portrait tools, their styles for Capture One. It is styles set six. And you can find it, of course, on the MVP website. Now, if Capture One makes significant changes to how this functions, we'll be on top of it. But I don't think it's going to change. I really don't. I said that already. It is so good. I can see this and it already is useful to me, but I can see this useful for many people immediately. So, and I hope that this set of actions, we're going to price it cheap. I hope this set of actions, or excuse me, styles, <laughs> I hope this set of styles works for you. I think it works for me great to get a lot of things happening very, very quickly. I get my white balance set, I get my exposure set, and then I can fly through these. And uh, I'm, I'm getting some great results is what I'm saying. So hopefully we'll have some more videos here soon showing the actual results I'm getting with these styles. But the more you play with them, the more you realize how powerful they are. By the way, a final thing I'll show you, let's say I go to background solid white here on a background shot i mean excuse me on an outdoor shot why you would do this i don't know but there you go pure white <laughs> and a lot of times when the background is really dark um the full brightening doesn't work because it, it can't work like photoshop where we fill with pixels we just have to peg a lot of settings so a lot of times if it's really dark in the background this won't work however in general if you have a dark background don't run the solid white thing and if you have a very bright background don't run the solid black you're going to have a problem. You're going to have an issue. But here you can take down the opacity of it and make it look super, super sunny like that if you want and keep on rolling. So many choices now that we finally have this function in Capture One. So check it out, mbpretouchtools.com. If you have any questions, leave a comment below.